In this video, we'll be using the pawn sensing component in order for an alarm to trigger a sound that our AI can hear. Let's start by opening up the AI that we have made previously. For those of you just joining us, this is a blueprint character that currently has the pawn sensing component attached to it. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on hearing. So if we go to our details panel, we are going to be focusing on the hearing threshold, the line of sight hearing threshold, as well as this only sense players button. The line of sight and hearing thresholds are both thresholds that designate when we can hear noises. But the line of sight hearing threshold is what adheres to line of sight as we understand it. The hearing threshold will be where you can always hear, so if you can hear through walls, and the line of sight hearing threshold is where you can just hear if you have a line of sight on the noise. Now, the reason that only sense players is important is because we're going to be making a noise that is not coming from the player. We're going to be using an alarm. As such, this needs to be turned off. Otherwise, the noise that we're making is not going to be heard by this AI if we have this set to true. So with all those parameters set, we're going to go into events and we're going to add the blueprint event on here noise, which is going to dictate what we do when we hear a noise. Now we can ignore this on C pawn. I'm going to disconnect it. This is what we did last time. It's not important. So let's focus on our on here noise. For now, all I'm going to do when we hear a noise is I'm going to print something and I'm just going to print hello, or we can be more dramatic and say, I can hear you. So our AI is ready to pick up noises. Let's compile and save that and go back to our map. Now I want us to go and right click and create another blueprint. This is going to be of type pawn. The reason we're doing pawn and not actor is because everything falls apart if you use actor and pawn sensing. So make sure you're choosing pawn because we do not care if our alarm is going to be able to move. I'm gonna call this alarm and I'm gonna open it up. Inside of this, I'm going to add a mesh component so that it can take up space in the world. Let's just do a spear for simplicity. And then I'm going to add the pawn sensing component and then I'm going to add the pawn noise emitter. So the reason we're doing pawn sensing is because we are going to get the alarm to detect the player with sight, and then it's going to make a noise using the pawn noise emitter that is going to alert our roaming guard. So let's quickly set up some parameters for our pawn sensing. First of all, our hearing threshold and line of sight hearing threshold can be set to zero. This is because this component is not going to be able to hear anything. We can go one step further and turn off hear noises. This is all a little overkill, but I'm using it to drive home a point. Now for our peripheral vision, let's set this to a nice hearty 60, just so that it's more of a cone shape. And then let's dial in our sight radius to something like 3000, just so that it doesn't span the entire map. From here, we're good to go into events and use the blueprint event on C pawn. So what do we want to do when we see a pawn? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to acknowledge that we are seeing a pawn just for the purposes of showing this off. And I'm going to say, I see you. Then after we have declared that we can see, we are going to use our noise emitter to make a noise. So let's go into the components here and drag in our noise emitter and let's get a copy of that. And we're gonna pull off of this and we're gonna use the function make noise. We can connect that to the flow. Our target is going to be our pawn noise emitter. And the noise maker is the actor who made the noise. Since in my head cannon, our alarm is what is making the noise, we are going to get a reference to our self and plug that in because ourselves or the alarm is going to be what's actually making the noise. Loudness is presented as a float, but it's really a Boolean. It's, is this going to make noise or not? If it's not making noise, you can leave it at zero, but if you want it to make noise and be detectable, then you put it to one. And then finally, the noise location is where in the world the noise is taking place. There's a variety of different approaches we could use for this, but regardless, it makes sense that this would come from our alarm, so let's get our alarm's location by using the get actor location, which we can then plug into our noises location. So now when our alarm sees something, it is going to scream that to the world and make a noise. So let's compile and save that and go back to our map. So now let's drag in an alarm, and I'm going to drag in my alarm right here. I'm going to raise it skyward. And from this angle, I like the way that it's pointing. I'm going to be able to walk forward, grab my gun, and then get spotted. So let's run with this. Let's hit play. I run forward. I grab my gun. And we can see the two messages in the corner. The I see you, and then it makes that noise. And then the guy in the corner is screaming, I can hear you. Perfect. Everything's working so far. So now we're going to go back into our enemy here. And we're going to make them actually be able to move around. So now instead of saying, I can hear you and doing nothing about it, we are going to take this 
and move this actor over towards where the noise came from. The way we're gonna do that is by using the AI move too. So let's remember from last time, the pawn is what is moving and that is going to be a reference to our self because we are what is going to be moving. And now we have to choose, do we wanna use destination or a target actor? Now in this case, I think destination just works a lot better because our target actor is hanging in the air. Remember that our AI is going to try and draw a path from where we are to where we need to go. And since our target actor or the alarm is suspended in the air, it's not gonna be able to create a path which can cause some issues. So we're just gonna to stick to destination for today. So what location are we gonna use? We're gonna make things super easy and get rid of that floating problem that the alarm clock has. So let's split the struct pin of both the location inside of the event and in the AI move too. Now remember that the Z axis is what is going to be what suspends our alarm in the air. So we're gonna just pass in the X location and the Y location and let the Z location relax because we don't care about any altitude for the purposes of this. It is at this point that I would note that if you were going to go off of the target actor, the instigator would be a great thing to pass in because the instigator is a record of what made the noise. So this would be handy if you had like two guards and one guard spotted someone and immediately screamed for backup. But for the sake of our alarm, this is a pretty good system that's going to be able to allow us to move towards wherever the alarm took place. So let's compile and save that there. And it's at this point before we hit play that I want you to note that my screen is green. My screen is green because I have a nav mesh bounds volume. If you have not added a nav mesh bounds volume, make sure you add one and make it big, make it tall, make it cover the entire area so that when you hit hotkey P, your screen also shows this green. This green dictates where and how the AI can travel to specific locations. So let's hit play and let's go stand and get our gun. We stand here, we get spotted and our AI friend comes to the location of the alarm. This makes sense, that's exactly what we programmed it to do. Let's take things a step further. So now, instead of passing in our actor location as where the noise is taking place, let's pass in the pawn's location or where we get spotted. And that's easy enough for us to do. Let's take the pawn that gets spotted and let's pass that into the actor location node that we already created. And this is gonna now pass in our player's location rather than our alarm's location. So let's compile and save that and I'll show you the difference here. So now let's hit play and let's go stand in the light and grab our gun here. We can see that we get spotted because of the noise and then he still goes towards our alarm. What's going on here? Well, if we go back into our alarm here, the issue with this is we are actually putting the noise maker to still be ourself. Despite the fact that we are passing in the actor's location for our player, we should actually also, if we want this to work the exact same way we're thinking about it, pass in pawn to be our noise maker. So we can compile and save that now. And now when we hit play, let's go grab our gun. We stand in the light. And we can see that this cop now comes right towards us and stays on us. The final note I wanna leave you with is specifically related to the tool tip of hear noises. To summarize this tool tip, if you are using both hearing and sight on the same character, then you should know that sight is the default sense. And if at any point, the actor is able to both see and hear, sight will be the only thing that runs. So go ahead with caution knowing that one. But that is all you need to know to understand the basics of how to use the hearing sense on the pawn sensing component in order to pull off different things in your games. Go out there and try it for yourself. I hope following along with this was helpful. If you found this useful, then subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be making a lot more Unreal Engine tutorials going forward. Good luck on your projects and I'll see you next time. Take care.